Welcome to another video. Again, we're talking about the monthly stats for my solar PV system here in the UK. Um, so for January 2020. Let's roll the intro and get to this month's update. Okay, so I know you're watching this in February, but Happy New Year to everyone. This is the first uh, update video for solar PV. Uh, on the channel so I hope you all had a, a good Christmas and New Year so it's January 2020 it's still cold and rotten uh, I haven't looked at the stats yet myself so I'm going to be interested to see how well we've done but I know that um, there was no real surplus energy for the car or for hot water everything went into the power wall so and that thinks it's been that much better than December but we shall see so um just got my phone ready. A uh, reminder to everyone. So I'm based in the West Midlands in the UK. Uh, my roof is kind of southeast facing. Uh, I have a nine kilowatt array with a six kilowatt inverter. And I have uh, a My Energy Eddy that enables me to heat uh, hot water from surplus uh, solar, as well as My Energy Zappy that I can charge my Tesla Model S with. And I also have a Tesla Powerwall battery where basically I store most of my energy uh, from the sun obviously for later usage and also the winter months like right now uh, I, I'm with Optimus Energy and I have their uh, go tariff so basically I fill up my Powerwall uh, overnight in between half past midnight and half past four in the morning uh, a third of the cost of the normal day rate electricity also uh, currently in the winter, charge my Tesla and heat my hot water, all using that um, cheap electricity so I can then use it during the day. Okay, so let's pop onto the computer and kind of look at the overview for January 2020. So we can see uh, in terms of system performance, the system produced 209.99 kilowatt hours of solar energy. I was able to self-consume 201.99. 34 kilowatt hours and exported somehow I guess that must have been uh, some odd occasions that um, obviously there's lots of solar and the water was already heated or the car wasn't plugged in but 8.64 uh, kilowatt hours of energy and my consumption continues to be pretty high um, because obviously charging the power heating the water uh, and charging the car um, so 1.3 1.43 megawatt hours uh, of energy uh, total with a 1.23 megawatt hours imported. Now, a couple of things I should note during the month of January, um, I've had a couple of uh, instances where the solar panels and uh, everything have been off. That's because I still have this one leak on my roof where the solar panel is mounted that still, at the time of doing this video, still hasn't yet um, been resolved. I've been out to fix it many times, but it still has a little bit of a leak which needs to be fixed. And I also, had some issues with my gas supply where the gas was turning off so uh, Octopus Energy sent out people to give me a new um, gas meter and a gas supply feed thing uh, and they also obviously they fit the Smets 2 gas meter and changed my electricity meter to a Smets 2 as well so a couple of times where I've had solar off and power off and other things that would have impacted performance slightly. So again looking back on the screen here you can see you know, throughout the, the whole month on this chart we had a couple of kind of days that weren't too bad kind of middle-ish of the month and a couple of days just over the last weekend that wasn't too bad in general uh, high consumption because I had been able to charge the car a lot and it's been doing more miles still less cheaper than petrol um, but yeah if we scroll down a little bit and do some comparison we can see that it was a bit better than December slightly um, but 2020 was slightly worse than 2019 in terms of solar performance so yeah not great um, as you can see the weather's been rubbish again today maybe it'd be good uh, in the rest of the week so what we're going to do is just jump through uh, the day by day uh, definitely not really too much analysis to be having but just gives you an overview of how my month has been um, with my array here in the UK so again the idea of these videos is to track performance for myself but also give you some indication if you're looking at getting solar yourself uh, and you have you know comparative size system and 
uh, angle elevation and all that kind of business. Okay, so we click into the first. Let's see if this is working. Okay, so here we go. Um, so again, standard situation here that we're going to see day after day after day. I have basically house is obviously using a little bit. Come half past midnight, a few things start to happen. So power wall starts to get charged up, which is what we see here. So whenever you see you know, just over four kilowatts, this is the power wall uh, charging. Then when you see this kind of additional three kilowatt jump, that's when the hot water comes on. So I'm only heating the hot water for a couple of hours each morning. That sees us through um, the whole of the day. And some other days you'll see a higher usage. That's when the Tesla uh, Model S is plugged in to charge as well. So we can see once um, you know, half past four comes and stuff stops charging, the system can run itself. Uh, we get a little bit of solar production, but then again, by four o'clock, uh, we're starting to pull from the grid again. And I've mentioned this before, uh, in a cave here where I work all day, um, I have a two kilowatt heater. So in the winter, that's on for a lot of the day, which basically uh, zaps the power from the power wall. Um, I have considered, as I mentioned before, other alternatives, but I still think for the amount of time I use it over, like three or four months of winter, and the cost to put something else in, I um, don't think it makes sense. So we'll just stay with this uh, for right now. So that was the first. Second, uh, very similar. So the hot water actually didn't need um, that much going into it there, so you only charge for a short period of time. Again, not much production, and then just variable usage um, throughout the day, cookers and hobs and, and whatnot happening there on the second. Look at the third, you know, again, very typical, a little bit more solar production there, but nothing fantastic, but kept us going for a bit longer, obviously, because we didn't have to fully drain the power wall until much later in the evening. On the fourth, here we can see um, this is where the Tesla is charging at the same time, which is where you have a much higher um, spikes. So Tesla, uh, car and power wall charging for a couple of hours there, and then power wall, car and hot water all charging in the last little bit. Um, this must be the weekend, I guess, the fourth, um, because that sees us all the way through. A little bit of generation, but that's fine. We don't really use much energy when I'm not uh, at work. And that sees us all the way through the rest of the day. Up until the morning, obviously, where normal matters are resumed. And again, the same thing. Not much production, but again, we're starting to use it into the evening. Fifth is the same. Really poor production there. You don't see hardly anything. 685 watt-hours of solar produced. So uh, definitely nothing to write home about there. On the seventh, again, very similar. 1.11 kilowatt-hours of solar. So again, pretty rubbish. On the 7th, uh, so this must be a day that I'm having the roof worked on because you can see panels are off um, because from 8 o'clock in the morning till lunchtime, no solar. Um, so not really a lot I can do about that. Moving on to the 9th. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Did they... Yeah, I think they were back. Yeah, they were back uh, multiple days. Yeah, so... So the panel's off again for a bit uh, in the morning here. So again, ability to generate solar was impacted here. A little bit of solar uh, in the late morning, but um, yeah, not fantastic. Another day uh, with some solar disruptions, the panel's off again between eight and nine, uh, but then a little bit of generation during the day, but um, again, not really great usage which is why I think um, you know, we did pretty well up until the evening on the 10th. If you look at the 11th, pretty good day. Um, so clearly car charging and everything happening uh, on the 11th here, but then keeps us going all the way through, even with just a little bit of generation, only 2.64 kilowatt hours. So people do say, obviously I do use a lot of energy, especially obviously on an electric car as well, you're gonna use a lot more energy. But during the day when I'm not working, actually my house doesn't use that much energy. It's just when I'm working, uh, have more systems on, um, so obviously it, it increases uh, the consumption during the day. On the 12th, similar, so power wall, hot water charging, few little blips of solar 
uh, but not enough to see us all the way through to the evening. 13th, right. then on to the 14th, car charging everything, um, a little bit of solar, but not a lot. So again, it's up by 2.45, we're uh, already pulling from the grid. Slightly better day in terms of solar, uh, nearly 10, 10 kilowatt hours, but again, usual affair going on. 16th, very similar. Spike is here, must be obviously Hobbs, Hob and uh, Oven or something there. Slightly better day uh, on the 17th in terms of our consumption, but again, towards the evening, I'm to pull from the grid again. This is a better day. So look, we got uh, clearly what's happened here is power wall, car, and uh, hot water as usual. Then we've had some decent solar, so peaked up there at 4.268. Obviously because the car didn't need charging, the hot water was already hot, um, so we exported again, uh, but still somehow running out towards the, the evening there. So again, not um, fantastic, but it, it meant probably I was running um, the heaters and stuff during the day, so it was probably powering that. 19th, again, not a bad day, some good solar generation, peaking up again at 4.32 that tends to be my kind of maximum during these um, winter months and again keeps us going all the way through the day 20th never good day again so again we've got a lot of export happening here oh, an export for the day I guess um, because uh, you know, hot water's already done and I think I might have been out um, so the car wasn't home to be charged 21st, again, not a bad day, some good generation, so peaking there, again around 4.5 kilowatts, um, so that's not too bad. 22nd, not quite sure what all these spiky bits are, um, obviously some kind of intermittent power usage, which is why the power wall I guess, didn't react in the time, not quite, not quite sure what happened there. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a mystery, but uh, yeah, kind of a sporadic day on the 22nd. Similar again on the 23rd. That's interesting. I'm just going to have a quick look, uh, pause the video a minute, have a quick look at my uh, calendar. See, I'm wondering now what happened on the 22nd and 23rd that would have resulted in such kind of uh, energy spikes like that. So, look at my calendar, nothing special happening those days, so I'm not quite sure what was going on there that would mean that that happened so it's just strange yeah the only thing i can think of maybe is that the temperature here in the cave is quite close to what it needs to be but it kept on kicking it on and off all the time i don't know it's uh that's an odd one uh 23rd again more of these little odd spikes there i wonder if this keeps on going after Maybe investigate a bit further. 24th, looks a bit more normal there. I guess what's happening actually, just going back to the 25th, these days obviously what's happening is power wall's obviously depleted and then we're having to just do these massive pulls from the, or surge pulls from the grid. Don't know. Uh, 25th, uh, not a bad day. Uh, well, not a bad day. In terms of we didn't use uh, loads, I guess, compared to normal, but um, very poor generation again, 1.47 kilowatt hours of energy. Pretty rubbish. 26, again, another super poor day. Roll on the spring, that's all I can say. 27th, yeah, again, very routine. No, no uh, records being hit. Here we go though, a uh, couple of days which weren't too bad towards the end of the month. So again, 4.5, 4.6 kilowatt uh, peaks. That's pretty good. So again, when we get some good production, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Good for the day. Again, similar here on the 29th. A little bit of export there as well, actually. 30th. Car charging and uh, everything. So again, another work day. So pulling energy uh, from later on in the day. And the last day of the month, 31st again. So very, very routine in terms of my consumption. And again, 
not much uh, generation to talk about. Okay, so that's basically the month in review. I, I think I'm going to keep on doing these videos, but it's not really until we get some good production that it's really, for me, super interesting to see how well the system performed. But I think it's important you know, to have balance so you can see how well the system is or isn't performing during the winter months, because especially in the UK, you know, mm -hmm. these, this type of weather isn't going anywhere. So uh, just to wrap up, as usual, let's have a little look at um, how uh, other information fared. So in terms of uh, Powerwall and um, Eddie and the Zappy. So, so for the Eddie, this month we put a massive 6.08 kilowatt hours of surplus um, solar into heating hot water. So not a lot, but you know, every little helps, I guess. And then uh, I know the car's going to be disappointing. So yeah, the car, 0.35 kilowatt hours of green solar energy went in there. The rest of it all came from the grid. So 318.58 uh, kilowatt hours. So um, obviously all during the off peak. I, I haven't been keeping a track of this, but if uh, leave a comment below if you're interested. But one thing I was thinking about is I hardly ever use uh, charging infrastructure because it, it's not very often I do really long trips. I've done a couple uh, last couple of days, but in general, all my charging happens at home. So in theory, it would be relatively easy for me to track the cost of running my Tesla Model S in terms of uh, energy because I can just look at this and obviously look at its five pence per kilowatt and know I did this many miles in the month and that cost me X. So I don't know if that's a stat that's uh, of interest to people uh, who are watching these videos. Obviously, this is normally about the solar PV house side of things, but if you want me to kind of track some stuff around uh, energy electric uses for the, the Tesla, I can do that as well. So leave a comment if that's of interest. And then uh, finally for the Powerwall, we've got 430 kilowatt hours um, out of the Powerwall. So um, yeah, so again, all of that is energy that cost me a third of the price using the Optimus Go tariff. So, that is it. Um, as usual, uh, please feel free to share how your system kind of ran uh, during the month of January. So again, slightly better than December, but still nothing too exciting. I'm hoping that, um, let me just double check again, I think February you tend to see a marked uh, improvement in performance from February over the previous year. Yeah. February normally is like almost double January, so I'm hoping that the good weather is coming. I definitely see the sun's up earlier it's going to get a little bit higher, so that should do what we're looking for. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter? And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest? Thanks again for watching.